Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop. Uh, today I'm going to be changing one or two more capacitors inside the radio, but first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test it uh, after changing a couple of capacitors yesterday. Here they are, these uh, really ugly, ugly guys. There's more of them inside. So th those two capacitors, one was the uh, tone control capacitor, and the other one is, I guess I could call it the volume control capacitor. All the audio in the radio it passes through this capacitor after leaving the volume control. So I'm going to check out the radio and see if that made any difference to its operation before we carry on. So the radio's off. something for an antenna. Let's see what's going on here. Very loud hump. That's not a good sign. I wonder if I've made an error. to make of that hum. Okay, so we got a piece of wire for an antenna, a piece of wire about 10 feet long. Let's see what we can get on this radio. so we have a signal. I want to hear if its distortion remains the same or not. Oh, it's just a terrible hum. Hmm. that aggregate IQ received $100,000 in federal funding last year to develop a data-driven tool for political campaigns. The contribution was for a project aimed at developing digital tools to predict voter turnout and the success of a campaign communication Could you in a laundry room use a bit of a makeover, but you don't quite have a lot of space? The city's Sarah Parrott has revealed in this week's At Home with Chatelaine. Chatelaine Home Editor Alexandra Gator says if you don't have a specific area for a laundry room, closets work too. Well, 
my assessment there. Now that was on low input voltage too. Instead of 120 volts, it's probably 90 volts, running with 90 volts, and that hum was extremely distinct. Now, I played this radio after doing the filter capacitors. There was no hum. And I've changed two more capacitors, and now there's a hum. Makes me think I must have done something. Something must have gone wrong with the two capacitors I, I put in. What could that possibly be? Frankly, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's take a look and see if we can. You know, maybe maybe something moved. <laughs> don't know how, but. The two capacitors I put in. It's bright yellow ones. I wouldn't imagine the tone one could introduce such a hum, but I don't really know. I know the tone worked a little bit. There's nothing. So I'm looking for some hidden short that maybe I missed. Sometimes soldering a terminal, you don't see it, but you unsolder another wire in behind it, and behind what you're working on. But I don't see that there. shorted against the case of the volume control here. I think that's probably what it was. That's a very good likelihood that's what it was. Okay, so I'm not going to bother testing the radio again. Or should I? Should I? Should I? It's upside down. Should I test it upside down? <clears throat> upside down should be okay. Let's give it a quick test. Otherwise, I am on an assumption that that is sunlight shining off the front of my radio. The sunlight actually making it right through my house into my shop here this morning. <clears throat> okay. Uh, switch is off. All we're doing is checking for a hum. So this should just take a moment. Switch is off. Okay. Just make sure everything's. Okay. Good thing. Good thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. See? <laughs> I'm gone. Oh, there's something weird going on back here now. See this ground here? This this connection was made, well, it was broken off, I believe. I just stuck it on the chassis here. See it sparking? Can you see what's, this is a significant deal here. It's a very significant deal. Now, keep your eye on my light when I touch this wire. I'm gone, but much more power being drawn. Okay, so I'm going to replace that paper capacitor with a 0.1. That's my best, my best guess as to what the right size is. This capacitor goes from a terminal on a tube to the chassis, uh, so its 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 business is almost certainly to uh, drain out any. RF or even, well not in this position, I was going to say even audio stuff, but not in this position. So 
putting in a slightly bigger one, even double the size, shouldn't matter, really. That's my story. Large connection right on the chassis. It's going to give me trouble eating up here. There we go. So while we're sitting here, I can see another one of these capacitors sitting right there. Maybe we should go after that one. It's another one that goes to ground. Ooh, there's one right in behind it too. So there's two more actually to do in there. shape. It's got its number on it. 6868 something 91. I don't know. Physically a bit smaller I'd say. Then we'll do a 0.05 into there. Now this other one, just 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 see the top of it there. Here's the top of it. And somewhere down there is the bottom. So let's see if I can just pull it up. And, uh,
think I see the wire coming out. Right at the bottom there. I don't see where it's going. It can't be going to chassis. The other end of the capacitor is going to the chassis. So. so just looping around and reaching this uh, lug that's right here. Is pointing at all kinds of stuff. It's probably going down to the tube contact, so I best cut this lead right tight to the capacitor and preserve as much wire as possible. Okay, getting cutters in there. finger there. Okay, there's the capacitor. About the size of the this one. This one's smaller. So I'm going to pretend this is a 0 0.05 and the other one's a 0 0.1. through there. Scratch the metal a bit. Of the tail. either one of these. A nice view on the camera. My, my view is obstructed by this by this.
the next capacitor. Oh, yeah, so I gotta look at what what did I cut free down way down there in the end. So it looks like it's right onto a terminal down there. Which I may not be able to get onto this camera here. Let's see. Cut this fairly short. Bend the loop. Oh, I gotta get the soldering iron past that too. Okay, put it in kind of sideways here. Okay, and this comes up to this ground terminal up here. go. So that's two more, three more, that's three of those paper capacitors gone. What am I left with here? Hmm. Left with this, these two, this gigantic one, and this one. And then that's it, I think, for paper capacitors. So let's push through and get these two out of here. Oh, there's three in there. Let's not push through. There's three. 
in here. Um, let me think. What should I do? gigantic thing here. That's the one I wanted to go after today. In fact, one, two, three. This one up on top here is easy. Looks like a 0 .05 to me. This one looks like a 0 .05 and this would look like a, a one or a two. I think this is a bigger one. I think this is a Point one, you know, this could be, it could even be much bigger. So, we just keep pretending this is a point oh five. I'll change it from here to here. Once I get this one out, one end goes to the ground, I can remember that, I'm pretty sure. So let's clip it right now. one is connected here which is the midpoint between two resistors I mean that's easy to do the other end where's the other end Under there, looks like it goes straight down to a tube. This this tube. Wiggling the capacitor and trying to spot its its lead. It must be way off here. Can't really see it. Okay. Let's try. We'll cut this top part off. There's another one right here. Oh man. Can't, can't get too many of these out at once. Oh boy, there is one right there. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to lose track of these. The sky goes to ground, no problem. When I just cut out, it comes from the back terminal. See, I'm already having trouble knowing that it come from there. No, what am I saying? It came from up here. So it comes from here down to there. So let's do that one before I forget it. Um, so that looks like a 0 0.05 to me. Get the 
soldering iron to go in there. Okay, so I'm going to cut this. Leave a lot of tail. Sticking out. short. Good. Okay, and I've got on the wrong side of these wires. done. Now this looks like a smallish capacitor. We're going to call it 0.05 again. Right between there. 0.05. Good.
this big honker. Okay, I'm gonna cut the lead. see where it's going. It's going to this little bundle here. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's out. This is one big, big capacitor. It's all open in the end there. Whew. What do you think that is? My gosh, if I've been doing 0.05 and 0.1 for these guys, this has got to be a 1. It's got to be a 1, a 1. I think I have 1, 1. Do I? Do I have one one? That's a that's a point two two. I don't think I have one one microfarad capacitor. What am I gonna do here? Uh good question. Just put in a point one and hope for the best. I'll put in a point two two. Too. That's what I'll do. I'll put in a point two two and uh, remain hopeful. I like that's going to the same terminal as this one. Scratch the surface of the metal a bit, dragging my pliers over it. a lot faster when I don't talk.
did something a little different this morning. Came down here without having eaten breakfast. Boy, that's not <laughs> that's not the best plan. I am hungry. in place here. solder up good. So I got a lot more done here than I really expected this morning. I'm getting a lot more done. soldered to fell out. My strategy failed here. Cutters as a pair of pliers, that's not the best idea. There. Okay, we'll just make the connection right onto the terminal, which is might just pop right off here. Maybe at the ready. There we are. 
one more to go. So that looks like, I don't know, who knows. Point one, that's what it is. Okay, I'm gonna come right off. Where'd I take this from? <laughs> to the ground. Remember that? Yes, I remember that. So we're gonna do Point one. We'll do point one from here to the ground. Point one. Bobby, if you're watching, look at all the shrink sleeve going in here. That's an inside joke with my very first viewer, Bobby Tiktalibus. actually owe a lot to uh, Bobby because he encouraged me like crazy when I started doing this. Without getting into the details, I became a video maker completely by accident. Just totally by accident. <laughs> you can believe it. How could you end up doing stuff like this by accident? But I did. First the video went on my YouTube channel without me even realizing that was happening. Didn't even know I had a YouTube channel. Didn't really know what a YouTube channel was. Uh, but uh, Bobby was there to encourage me because, uh, boy, I, I really thought first I thought I was the only guy making these kinds of videos when I started because I didn't know any better. I certainly wasn't. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's been a long journey to get to here. And have I ever said before I was doing videos, I was fixing radios in my shop just all by my lonesome. feel alone, even though I am. Okay, every one of them's in. I think it's time to test the radio. 41 minutes on the video. Okay, let's give them a test here. First, uh, no antenna. Collect all these bad, these old capacitors. I gotta test all these and find out what is going on with them. Look at that, look at that. Ah. Okay, hope we're good to go here. Switch is off. Power is on. Made lots of changes again, so I really need to keep an eye on these light bulbs. I'm going to switch on. Everybody look away. Guard your eyes. All is normal.
Okay, so we're starting off again with low line voltage. Somewhere around 95 or something like that. Come on, little radio. Don't be quiet now. Okay, let's put on the Eeyore loop antenna. Having the problem with that's where my provincial counterpart Lori Scott is, is having the problem with. Uh, the minister basically backed up with the bureaucrats were saying and uh, decided uh, he wasn't going to pursue this anymore. Oh, that's pretty high. So we're, we're going to there's obviously a provincial election coming up. We're hoping for change in the province of Ontario, and hopefully with that we can. Uh, yeah, I'll keep them out on uh, mine as mine as well this afternoon or later on this morning. So I'm not going to get them up. My uh, Twitter handle is monster underscore home. Some of the things we covered today includes, uh, well, a pretty cool historical and digital look at the Welland Canal. The Welland Canal. So this might be 610 from St. Catharines. My lifestyle is completely up to me. I can go to this, I can do that. And they just make this look moving to Barcelona. Taking a trip to New York. We were discussing a little while ago. I was just talking with uh, uh, one of our producers here, Emily, about a big trip that her and, uh, that her, and her boyfriend just did. And I was like, oh, that sounds so cool. We were kind of comparing notes on it. But it kind of ends up being do the things you, you need to do so you can do the things that you want to do. Absolutely. And by the way, thank you for that bottle of wine. Absolutely. What do you say? Well, we're giving away wine. Let's give away some passes as well. No problem. Well, you're in Beach Road, the I gotta tune the uh, antenna. I bet the uh, road conditions are pretty treacherous up in this area because of the snow and icy conditions, reduced visibility as well. So certainly reduce speed accordingly if you're heading up or down the 400 near the Barry area right now. That's where I am. I'm near the Barry area. Knows all the ins and outs of moving, and will help you move so that you don't even break a fingernail. Is Lori Dell of Moving Seniors with a smile. So good morning, Lori. Good morning, Marilyn. Happy story? Yeah, it's kind of a happy story. Although, although the temperatures don't feel like spring, um, my happy story is that many of of your listeners are moving forward regardless of the weather. Okay. Um. So some of the distortions I heard earlier before changing out, uh, actually some of the earliest uh, capacitors, the volume control capacitor and the tone control, uh, seem to have disappeared. Um, could be that the volume control capacitor was leaking uh, some DC, and the DC was pushing off the bias of the audio tube, causing the distortion I heard. I don't know. I don't know for sure whether that's true or not. Um, the radio sounds muffled, there isn't much treble coming out of it, that's probably indicative of alignment issues. The dial appears to be way off, I'm not sure, but it appears to be off by uh, about, about 100 kilohertz almost. So th this is fairly easy to straighten out also. Um, in terms of replacing more parts, we might be done. I think the next stage really is to, to do an alignment, pick up the performance of the radio and see what we got. But uh, I think we're at the finish point pretty well. Fantastic. That's great. Okay, well, thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you, catch you on the next video.